concept of efficiency under perfect competition. The question we will be answering today is what makes perfectly competitive markets and the firms that compete in such markets both productively and allocatively efficient. This is a concept that is used regularly in economics classes to describe the benefits of a competitive market over a less competitive market, such as monopoly or oligopoly. In order to understand what makes less competitive markets inefficient, we first must understand what it is that makes perfectly competitive markets efficient. So this video is probably the final video in our perfect competition section of the syllabus. So if you haven't already, make sure you go back and watch the preceding videos before this one under perfect competition. Before we can illustrate and explain what makes perfectly competitive markets efficient, we first must define the two different measures of efficiency that we refer to in economics. So let's begin with the easier type of efficiency to understand. Let's look at productive efficiency and come up with a clear definition of what it means to be productively efficient. Productive efficiency refers to the use of resources in the production of goods and services. Productive efficiency is achieved when firms produce their output in the least cost manner. In other words, firms must produce at their minimum average total cost. Earlier in the course, we explained that the costs a firm faces are inversely related to the productivity of that firm's resources. This means that when a firm is achieving its minimum average total cost, the resources the firm employs are being used at their maximum efficiency. Nothing is going to waste when a firm is producing at its minimum average total cost. So productive efficiency occurs when the price of a good is equal to the minimum average total cost. In order to remain competitive in such a market, firms must achieve their minimum average total cost. So to determine whether a firm is achieving productive efficiency, we must ask the question, does the price of the firm's product equal the firm's minimum average total cost? When looking at a perfectly competitive firm in its long run equilibrium, we can see that in fact price does equal minimum average total cost. So if we look at our graph here and we zoom in on the equilibrium level of output that this firm will produce in the long run at its MC equals MR point. This, as you may recall, is the profit maximizing level of output. At this level of output, we can see that the price is equal to the minimum average total cost. If the price that this firm could sell its output for were any higher, the firm would not have to produce at its productively efficient level of output. For instance, if the demand for this good were greater, this firm would increase the quantity of output that it produced from QF to Q1. Now, is this firm still achieving productive efficiency? It is clear that it is not. A firm in the short run may not be achieving productive efficiency if the price at which it can sell its goods for is greater than the long run equilibrium price. The reason for that is that at this level of output, Q1, you can see that the firm is achieving an average total cost that is greater than the minimum average total cost. How do I know? that this point right here is greater than the minimum point on ATC? Well, that's because we learned earlier in the course that the marginal cost curve intersects the average total cost curve at its lowest point. Therefore, at Q1, the firm is producing at a marginal cost that is greater than the minimum average total cost, implying that the firm is no longer productively efficient. So how do we know that a firm in perfect competition will always achieve its productively efficient level of output in the long run? The reason for that is that at MR1, which I've labeled here, and D1, this market is not in its long run equilibrium. If the price that the firm could sell its output for was greater than its minimum average total cost, then new firms would be attracted to this market, increasing the market supply and driving the price down until it equals the minimum average total cost. If economic profits are being earned in the short run, those profits will be eliminated in the long run and the price will fall, forcing the firm to reduce its output back to the productively efficient level where P equals minimum ATC. 
In fact, all perfectly competitive firms will achieve productive efficiency in the long run due to the nature of competition itself. Low barriers to entry mean that any time firms earn economic profits and are able to produce at a productively inefficient level of output, new firms will be attracted to the market, forcing the price back down, forcing the existing firms to increase their productive efficiency until they have achieved their minimum average total cost. At this point, there is no way for this firm to become more efficient in its use of its resources. It is producing at its lowest possible average total cost. So that is productive efficiency. We know that firms in perfectly competitive markets will be productively efficient because in the long run, the price will equal the minimum average total cost in perfectly competitive markets. But productive efficiency is only one measure of efficiency. We also must ask the question, what makes perfectly competitive markets allocatively efficient? So next we're going to define allocative efficiency, which is a little bit more complex of a concept than productive efficiency. And then we're going to look at our diagram again and determine whether or not perfectly competitive firms and the markets in which they compete achieve allocative efficiency. First, let's define allocative efficiency. This refers to a situation in which the quantity being produced in the market allows for the greatest level of total welfare, meaning consumer and producer surplus, possible. An industry is allocatively efficient if there is no way that consumer and producer surplus can be increased by changing the level of output. Now, earlier in the course, we explained that consumer surplus refers to the total well-being of consumers who were willing and able to pay a higher price than the equilibrium price of the good in the market. Graphically, consumer surplus is indicated by the area of the triangle below the demand curve and above the equilibrium price in the market. This triangle outlined in yellow represents the consumer surplus in our market in the graph on the left. Producer surplus, on the other hand, referred to the total welfare of producers who were able to sell their product at a price greater than their cost of production. In other words, producers who would have been willing and able to sell their product at a lower price, but instead are able to sell it at the higher price of PE. Graphically, producer surplus is shown by the area below the equilibrium price and above the supply curve, the area I'm outlining in blue in our graph on the left. In our graph on the left, which shows a perfectly competitive market in its long-run equilibrium, we can see that consumer and producer surplus are maximized. The consumer surplus is the yellow triangle. The producer surplus is the blue triangle. Now, how do I know that a quantity of QE maximizes consumer and producer surplus? Well, let's put a different quantity on here and see what the effect on consumer and producer surplus would be. For example, let's choose a quantity Q1 and indicate the effect that a lower quantity would have on total consumer and producer surplus and therefore total welfare in this market. If this industry were only producing Q1 units of output, we can see that the demand for Q1 is greater than the supply of Q1. Now, earlier in the course, we explained that the demand curve on a graph represents the marginal benefit of consumers in that market, whereas the supply curve represents the marginal costs of producers in that market. So at a quantity of Q1, we can see that the marginal benefit is greater than the marginal cost in this industry. This means that resources are under allocated towards this good. At Q1, society benefits more than it costs the producers of this good to produce the good. We would all be better off if a greater quantity was produced. If we produced at QE, the marginal benefit would diminish due to the law of diminishing marginal utility. We would see that the additional benefit consumers get from more and more output of this good would decline. However, the marginal cost would increase to producers due to the law of diminishing marginal returns. Producers' marginal costs would rise and 
the two would converge on the equilibrium point. So only right here at our equilibrium point is the marginal benefit enjoyed by consumers of the good equal to the marginal cost imposed on producers of the good. This is the allocatively efficient level of output. So what would happen if production occurred at a level of output beyond QE? Wouldn't society be better off with more of everything? You may think so. However, at some point, if we look out here at Q2, we can see that the cost to producers of achieving a quantity of Q2 is greater than the benefit enjoyed by consumers of having the quantity Q2. In other words, this level of output is allocatively inefficient because the marginal cost is greater than the marginal benefit. Society has overproduced the good at a quantity of Q2, and society has underproduced the good at a quantity of Q1. Only at QE is society efficiently producing this good. This is what we call the socially optimal quantity of output. Where marginal benefit equals marginal cost, society has achieved an allocatively efficient or socially optimal level of output. Anything less than that and resources are under allocated towards the good. Anything more than that and resources are over allocated towards the good. So looking back at our definition of allocative efficiency, we can say that it is achieved when marginal benefit equals marginal cost. Now in a individual firm diagram, there is no marginal benefit curve. However, there is a demand curve and demand represents marginal benefit. In the individual firm diagram, we can determine whether or not allocative efficiency is achieved by looking at whether the price equals the marginal cost in the long run. So we can also say that when price equals marginal cost, a firm is being allocatively efficient. So I'm going to clean up the graph here and we're going to do an analysis of allocative efficiency in both the market and the firm diagram here to explain why perfectly competitive firms are always allocatively efficient. Let's look at our individual firm graph on the right. What makes firms in perfectly competitive markets allocatively efficient? In other words, why do firms in perfect competition produce where P equals MC? That's what we're going to look at here. Does the marginal cost that the firm achieves equal the price, which is a signal of marginal benefit? Notice that the demand curve for a perfectly competitive firm's output is horizontal at the equilibrium price in the market. So we can see this demand curve is also representing the marginal benefit that consumers get from the good being sold. Since an individual firm will always wish to produce where marginal revenue equals marginal cost, we can also see that this is the allocatively efficient level of output because in perfect competition, marginal revenue equals the price. Firms are price takers. They can sell as much of this good as they want to at the equilibrium price. For that reason, the change in total revenue of increasing its output by one unit will always be the price. The marginal revenue, in other words, is always equal to the price in perfect competition. And in fact, this is only true in perfect competition. We will see that in other market structures, the marginal revenue of a particular level of output is always lower than what the firm can charge for that unit of output. Therefore, in other market structures, allocative efficiency will not necessarily be achieved. But in perfect competition, because the marginal revenue equals the price, and because firms will always wish to produce where marginal revenue equals marginal cost, the result is price will always equal marginal cost under perfect competition. Now, what if firms were not profit maximizers in perfectly competitive markets? What if this individual firm chose to produce at a level of output less than its profit maximizing level? For example, at Q1. If this were to occur, we can see that this firm would no longer be maximizing its economic profits. In fact, it would be earning economic losses. This is clearly not a desirable level of output for the individual firm. And we can also see that the price is now greater than the marginal cost since marginal cost is right here and the price is still up here.
Now, why is this allocatively inefficient? Well, if this firm were producing at a lower level of output and there were a thousand firms identical to this one in the market, none of them producing at their profit maximizing level, then in our market diagram, there would certainly be an under allocation of resources towards this good. We can see that if individual firms were producing at a quantity of Q1, the total output in this market would be at a lower quantity as well, less than QE. So I'll put a point of Q1 in our market diagram, and let's see the effect that this lower level of output has on allocative efficiency in the market. Here we see that if the price of this good were PE, yet the quantity that firms were producing at were Q1, then the marginal benefit that consumers get of Q1 is greater than the marginal cost imposed on producers at Q1. The total sum of consumer and producer surplus is less than what is achievable if output were at QE. This is an allocatively inefficient level of output because total welfare is less than what it could be if output were at a greater quantity. Total welfare at Q1 is equal to the green area in our graph on the left. However, if individual firms were producing at their profit maximizing level of output where the price equals the marginal cost, there would be a gain in total welfare of the yellow triangle. So only at QE is total welfare maximized. If firms produce at any level of output besides where the price equals the marginal cost, total welfare will be reduced in this market. And we have to say that that therefore is allocatively inefficient. So Q1 resources are under allocated towards this good. Society would be better off with a greater quantity of output because total welfare, the sum of consumer and producer surplus would be increased by the yellow triangle in our graph. Now, if firms were to produce at a level of output beyond the profit maximizing level, we would have the same problem. If firms produced at Q2, which is not their profit maximizing level, you can see that the marginal cost is now much greater than the price. Resources are now over allocated. In our market diagram, we could put a point of Q2 and show that too much would be produced in this market if firms did not produce at their profit maximizing level. The marginal cost to the firms in the market is now greater than the marginal benefit enjoyed by consumers. So allocative efficiency requires that firms produce where the price equals their marginal cost of production. At any level of output greater or less than that quantity, resources will either be over allocated or under allocated towards the production of the good in the market as a whole. But since firms are interested in maximizing their profits, they should always produce where marginal revenue equals marginal cost. And since marginal revenue equals price under perfect competition, this will also be allocatively efficient. So this lesson went through two different types of efficiency. Productive efficiency, which requires that firms will produce at their minimum average total cost in the long run. And allocative efficiency, which requires that firms will produce where their marginal cost equals the price of the good. Both of these conditions are met under perfect competition in the long run. Due to the fact that barriers to entry are very low, if profits exist and firms are inefficient in the short run, they will be forced to be efficient once again due to the entrance of new firms and the increased competition driving prices down to the minimum average total cost. Firms interested in maximizing their profits will always wish to produce where their marginal revenue equals their marginal cost, which under perfect competition will always be where price equals marginal cost. Hence, firms are both productively and allocatively efficient in perfect competition. In a later lesson, we will examine less competitive market structures, such as monopolistic competition, oligopoly, and monopoly, and, and illustrate what makes those market structures less efficient, both productively and allocatively, than perfect competition.